Guys, we got a real quick one here. Um, so now we've opened the um, we've opened the three D view. We've opened the floor plan. I just wanted to show you the real quick um, trick to get to basically tile the views. So it's just the WT hotkey. Um, so WT. Oh wait, do I not have it? WT. Yeah, there you go. Um, so that just kind of tiles those two views for you. Um, I will say this: one of the the ways that you can get super efficient, and it will take time to get there, of course. Um, is to really learn the hotkeys. Um, I, I work a little differently. You saw before in the last class, I, I gen generally like to work like a Mac user with windows everywhere. So this isn't a tool that I use that frequently, but people who use these tools all the time, very efficient. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the 3D view open and uh, we're gonna work on plan as well. And then we'll uh, create another wall, okay? So, um, yeah. All right. So one of the things I wanted to teach you was these these four walls that we just created. They're they're generic. They're eight inches. Um, and what we did, the reason I chose an eight inch wall is because generally the exterior assembly of a building is going to be a little bit thicker than the interior assembly wall um, of a wall, I should say. So um, do you guys know what I mean by the assembly? No. No. Okay. So the assembly of the wall is like I have studs and then I have jip board. Do you guys know what jip board is? Okay, so I have studs, and then I have jip board, or, or yeah, drywall, right, um, on the outside of that, right? That's an interior wall assembly. On an exterior wall assembly, you'll have a stud with, um, like, jip board on the inside. Then on the outside, you're going to have something like for type 5, you'll have plywood uh, sheathing, and then you'll have, like, a weather barrier. You might have insulation, depending on what kind of cladding you're using, and then you're going to have your exterior skin, right, or exterior uh, system. So they're a little bit thicker. Also, the exterior walls for a lot of building types, um, if you have a, a bearing structure, your exterior walls are carrying most of the load. So they need to be a little bit thicker to carry more load. Okay, we're gonna talk much more detail about this kind of stuff when we get into our projects. But um, in the schematic design phase, while we're using generic uh, families, we just use like an eight inch wall and like a six inch wall, something like that, or an eight inch and a five inch. And then we figure out the rest later. But before I do that, I want to show you like the most amazing Revit tool that you will ever see in your entire life. It is the coolest thing. Okay, you ready for it? Create similar. It is the coolest freaking thing. It's like it's like the most amazing revolutionary tool that has ever been introduced to any software. Ready? Watch this. So if I want to create an element that is the same as something that's on my screen, all I have to do is click it and hit CS. Boom, and I'm drawing a wall, right? Like that. Boom. Now I'm already drawing a wall. That's awesome, right? What? Oh, yeah. CS. Create similar. Yes. What? It's switched? Yeah. That's weird. That switched your views? All right, I'm going to come take a look at that. Okay. Okay. So, um, so all right, hang on, guys. <laughs> so, it's possible. It's po Are you using 2018? No. Okay. Then I, I gotta check your hockey. But um, all right. So anyway, the the tool is called Create Similar. I did it really fast because I wanted you to see how fast it was. But the hotkey is CS. And what it does is like when you, when you just select an object, you type in CS, and then you can just start drawing with that object. Like you have windows. Yeah. Like if I need to make another window of the same type, yeah. You just hit CS and it just grabs that family for you. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is use that tool because the more you use it, the more you'll remember it. So grab a wall, hit CS, and then, and then, I need your attention. Okay, well, we'll check that on yours. Um, go up to basic wall, and I want you to switch it to a generic 5-inch. Okay. Um, and then we're just going to throw some interior walls in there. The, the design doesn't matter in this. I just want you to uh, see... The process so anyway i'm just going to do like a little sidewall here and i'm going to do something like uh yeah 12 feet is good put something there um let me just draw another thing like that and maybe that's a bathroom and then i'll split something like that and maybe there's a kitchen and uh i'm going to do something like this because maybe there's like an entry nook all right, so I just did something like that. I want you guys to do something kind of similar. Um, all you have to do is just 
click, 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 wherever you need to go. And Revit will default to your orthogonal angles, OK? What questions do you have? All right, so I'm going to come around and, and check your hotkeys and see why they're not working. Oh, uh, actually, one thing about hotkeys in Revit, are you hitting CS and Enter? That's why. Yeah, so, so that's a very significant difference about Revit and most other programs. You don't have to hit Enter to execute the command. As soon as you hit that hotkey, it's active. OK. Yes. What could I do when the do all of a sudden switch? Um, you can hit um, enter again, and it will switch back. If that was the last, um, view, if that was the last command you did, otherwise, just hit WT again, and it'll tile it back the other way. Yeah. All right. Let me stop the video, and I'll come around and troubleshoot with you.